You know what time it is. Give me the green light. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm ready to go. Let's have a good time. Let's go. What you waiting for? You only got one Hi everybody, I'm Nigel Poulton and it's time for another go. Kubernetes so moment. Cause I'm ready to go. So for this week's Kubernetes moment, I thought we'd talk about Kubernetes services. So a pretty fundamental Kubernetes object and I'm sure that we're all using them. Now we think about services as providing that stable or reliable network endpoint for a set of unreliable ports, yeah? And almost always we think about them as providing traffic flow or routing traffic to pods that are running inside of our Kubernetes cluster. So we've got the three main service types. We've got cluster IP that gives internal access to a set of pods, node port, which lets us access from outside of the cluster on a common port across every node in the cluster. And then we've got load balancer, which integrates with our cloud service provider, provisions one of their internet facing load balancers and lets traffic come into our cluster and reach the pods that are running our application. But all of that is about getting traffic to pods that are running in Kubernetes or components of our application that are running in Kubernetes. Now, and I, I even have to check myself on this sometimes, there's actually a fourth type of service called external name. And the name kind of gives it away a little bit, but that's about getting traffic from inside of our Kubernetes cluster to the outside world. And I think some use cases would be when you're performing an application migration, um, you don't necessarily lump everything straight into containers and onto Kubernetes in one go, right? You might do it piecemeal where you bring parts of the application in, but that still need to communicate with external components of the application. Or you may have an application that just will always need to communicate with something outside of the cluster. So for that, you can deploy a Kubernetes service of type external name. Now it has a front end and a back end just like a normal service. So the front end would tend to be a combination of the name of the service, which obviously gets registered with the cluster's internal DNS and a port. So you would hit it on my service and let's say port 80, but then the back end, you'd go external name and then whatever it is, legacy.myapp.com or whatever, yeah, on, I don't know, port 8080. And the service will take care of accepting traffic on its front end to whatever I call the service, my service at port 80, and it will then route to anything behind the DNS name that was legacy.myapp.com on port 8080. So that's services for you, right? I think we all get what they are, but more often than not, the people I speak to, and even myself, right, we forget that there's an external name type of service. So that's your Kubernetes moment for this week, and that was a great learning tip. Cause I'm ready to go.